What up, Laker Nation? Uh, today, I want to talk about the Lakers and Celtics. I'm on a little rant right now. Uh, every time, I'm sick or tired of every time I read an article or hear these uh, broadcasters or analysts keep saying that Celtics in better uh, shape than the Lakers and say the Celtics have better players than the Lakers. Um, I think Celtics is very overrated. They players, they was basically uh, a 42-43 win team, and nobody in the team really stood out. They had, but Isaiah Thomas he averaged like 20 points, but everybody else played like a, this uh, supporting role. They good. They basically they hold. They got a team full of role players. I think potentially the Lakers have a better team. If you look at it, I, I break it down player for player. Uh, basically, when you say young players or super young players, you basically say like 25 and under. Most of their players is over 25, uh, except for a couple players. Jared Schellinger is a backup. Julius Randle is way better than Jared Schellinger. Randle is better rebounder, better scorer. Better ball handle. Rand only played one year in the league. Selinger got like three or four years in. And he he didn't show near what Randall showed in one year. The same goes for Kelly O'Lenny. He he didn't really show no great potential. He's basically a, another one, a backup. Randall got like starting potential, maybe all star um, potential that I feel. Now as far as the backcourt you got guys like Avery Bradley, he's 26, uh, Marcus Smart. I feel it's my opinion. I think D'Angelo Russell and Clarkson is better than both of them. If you look at it, Marcus Smart definitely a backup. His greatest strength is his toughness and his defense. I don't, I don't really see him being a starting point guard in this league right now. I think he basically... Just he's a tough player. That's just what he is. And uh, Avery Bradley is a six-two shooting guard. He could get, you know, outmatch, you know, as far as bigger players. I think uh, potentially Russell and uh, ran Russell and Clarkson potentially better than him. Clarkson. He had two years under his belt. Already showed that he definitely could be a good start in this league. He could play the one or the two. I, I think he's a, definitely a better point guard than Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley definitely a better defender. Bradley and and Mark Smart defensively much better than them two. But overall, to look at the big picture of the game, I like uh, Russell and Clarkson. I like their passing ability a little better um, as far as the all-around game. And like I said, um, Avery Bradley been in the league like five five years maybe. So these guys, like I said, only one or two years in the league. So falls on that end and uh you have uh who else you have on the Celtics? You have Jay Crowder, another one he's twenty six years old. He's not your ideal starting small forward. He's another role player. If Celtics upgrade their talent, he would be a guy coming off their bench. I think the Lakers have full-fledged starters. I think Julius Randle is a legitimate starter in this league. I think uh, Clarkson, Russell, and then if you want to bring in Ingram compared to whoever they're going to pick, I think the Lakers is, is, is about the same. The Lakers, they have more players under contract than the Lakers. Then you have the guys like um, Evan Turner. He's, what, 28 years old. He been in the league for for some years, so they have guys who's supposed to be producing. Then I feel it's overrated because they make so much of the Celtics, this, the Celtics, that they players. They only won like forty three games, and in the East, forty three games in the East, and most of their players average 10, 12, 11. They get everybody basically contribute on their team, which is good, which is a good thing. But it was nothing outstanding but Isaiah Thomas.
he the only one really exploded. Everybody else, like I said, 10, 11, 12 points, and, which is good. Not knocking it, but look what, what these guys did. And, and you have to look at it like this. Byron Scott was really bad on them. He he said they on the heart in the OKC game. He said they were scared. He never encouraged him when they did have good games. He always said they could do better. You know, which is cool, but sometimes players in this generation, you cannot do that. You have to show players you you got their back. And I don't think, I think under Byron Scott, I think a lot of, he didn't get the best out of his players. The same with like Randall. In and out the lineup, he toying with Randall, he still averaged a double-double basically in his first year. And I feel he didn't use him right. A lot of players he didn't use right. So I think as far as the coaching, going to make a big difference. And another year under their belt, going to make a big difference. If you put, to, to show that the Lakers have, have better players, if you used to put Russell alone on the market, you'll get more return for Russell than any player on their team. Even Isaiah Thomas. You put Randall on the market, you'll get more from Randall than anybody on their team. Clarkson, if he's on the market, you get more for anyone in their team. Like I said, Isaiah Thomas trade value is not that, that high because he's 5'8", and he's basically more of a scoring guard. You know, he liability defensively. His trade, he good for that team, but team wouldn't go crazy to make no trade for him. Mark Smart, they won't do it. Uh, Evan Turner... Olenek, uh, Avery, Brad Avery Bradley may have probably the strongest trade value because he could defend. But like I said, he's 6'2", shooting guard. So, you know, with that. So I'm just, just, just sick of keep hearing, well, oh, the Celtics in a better situation. Durant should go there. They they, they um, further along than the Lakers, which I really doubt. I doubt they really further along the Lakers. We only have like maybe four players, five, four or five players under contract. As far as the four or five players under contract, I don't think Nick Young and uh, Lou Williams might not be a part of it. I don't know. So you have to t t put that in the, in the in fact. Like, they players, the Celtics, like I said, is overrated. They only won like 43 games. The same I feel with um, Charlotte. They make a big deal with Charlotte O, oh, with Nicholas Platoon and Jeremy Lin. I saw a report I laughed at about the Lakers were offer Jeremy Lin to Max, and he should get it. Like, come on, I, I'm, I'm not going to continue to talking about that, that foolishness. But um, the same thing with Charlotte. A lot of their players getting overvalued because, like I said, they in the East. They won, like, maybe 43 games. And Jeremy Lin averaged, what, 11, 12 points? He happened to have some big games on, when it's um, televised, so it looked like he's doing more than what he was doing. But Tone after like 15, they had a, a, a year as far as nobody expected, as far as the team. But Kemba Walker basically carried them. He basically was the main guy on that team with big explosive games. Everybody else, but Tone, uh, Marvin Williams, uh, Jeremy Lin, they basically play roles. Like I said, 15, 14 for Batum. I think like 12 for Marvin Williams, 11 for Germany Lynn. On a 43 win team, that's not no real big number. That's 43 in the East. I keep stressing that in the East because it's important. In the East, 43 wins. Celtics, same thing. And they made the playoffs. So you got to put that in there. You got to factor that in. So, like I said, a lot of their players get overvalued. Oh, this and that, that. And their numbers wasn't that strong. It ain't like them 11 points with, with OKC or with um, San Antonio, with Cleveland, or Golden State. You know, that's that's the difference. They got more um, horses over there. So, you guys, tell me what you think. I'm on a little rant right now. Subscribe to me. Follow me on Twitter, Lake of Beat News. Leave your comments. I'm dying to hear what you guys have to say, what you guys think about what I'm saying.